Well, hello again. It's Michael from Fujifilm North America. And here it is, September 2nd, 2021. And we heard about many new products from Fujifilm on this day, both for the X-Series and GFX series cameras. I'd like to talk about first for the X-Series. So we heard about the new XF 23mm f1.4 and the new XF 33mm f1.4. Now, both of these have the full letter designations of R, L, M, W, R. R meaning ring, aperture ring, L, M, linear motor, and W, R for weather resistance. Now, there has been an existing XF 23mm f1.4 out for many, many years, and it's a really great lens. I really enjoy it very much. But there have been a lot of improvements with the version 2. First of all, you'll notice that it's a little bit taller, the version 2 is. So, uh, one of the main reasons for that is the change to the linear motor design on the inside, which gives you extremely snappy an accurate spot on autofocus. And if you can see in these comparisons here, where I had an X-T4 in video mode set to the fastest response time, you can see there is a little bit of lag with the old one, whereas with the new one, it's absolutely immediate, no hesitation and spot on every single time. So that's due to the linear motor design. Also, part of the reason that the lens is bigger, the new one is bigger, is because of the weather resistance. So the older 23mm f1.4 did not have any weather sealing on it, whereas the new one has a lot. Um, however, more significantly is the fact that the uh, second version of the XF 23mm 1.4 has 15 optical elements, uh, several of which are aspherical, versus 11 optical elements in the older design. And this was done to make it much sharper and with lower distortion and lower aberration. And you can see in the comparison chart here on the MTF curves that the line for the new 23mm f1.4 is noticeably flatter all the way across compared to the original one. So that is a big improvement. This lens will be $899. Now, for the XF 33mm 1.4, this is a new lens. We've never had anything in this focal length before, but let's compare it to the existing 35mm f1.4. Now, yes, the 35mm is noticeably smaller, <clears throat> and primarily this is going to be due to the number of elements because the older 35mm f1.4 only has eight optical elements, whereas the 33mm 1.4 has 15 elements. Again, for the same reason as to vastly increase the amount of sharpness resolution, lower the chromatic aberrations, and lower the distortion. And here again is a comparison chart showing you the 33 versus the 35. And you can see, again, it's much flatter and more consistent across the board. Also, with the linear motor, the 33mm, again, is super snappy and on-the-nose accurate every single time compared to the slightly more laggy 35mm, which has a lens design that's about 10 years old. This lens, the 33mm f1.4, will be $799 when it comes out in late fall. All right, sticking with lenses, we have a new lens for the GFX series of cameras, the GF 35 to 70 millimeter f4.5 5.6 WR lens. I notice there is no R in the designation. There is no aperture ring on this lens. So you'll be controlling aperture from uh, the front wheel on our GFX cameras. Of course, you can switch the operation, but by default, it will be the front wheel, which you can set to toggle between ISO and aperture. So that was done to make the lens smaller and lighter and more compact. So at 3570, it's 
close to the GF3264, but a little bit more versatile, so slightly wider range. And on the wide end, it's almost the same, but on the longer end, it makes it a bit more of a portrait lens. The price on this is going to be 999 US dollars. 999. That's less than $1,000 for a very, very sharp, large format lens. Uh, we did this uh, basically to allow people that want to migrate from other camera systems to get into the GFX system without hurting your wallet. Now something I like that's really, really interesting is, as you can see, there's a little bit of lens travel as it zooms, but the lens collapses into a really small compact size when you want to pack it into your bag. So see that again? It basically becomes a whole inch shorter when you put it into the locked travel position. I think that's really interesting and really unique. Now the lens by itself won't be available until November, uh, but come October, you'll be able to get this lens as a kit with this camera. So what no, not this camera. This is the GFX 50S. You'll be able to get it in a kit with this camera, which was also announced September 2nd. This is not the GFX 100S that you think I'm holding. This is the new GFX 50S version 2. So what it is, is we have taken the tried and true 51.4 megapixel sensor from the original GFX 50S, GFX 50R cameras, put it in the body of the GFX 100S. And the price on this camera is going to be $39.99, $3,999 American dollars, okay? Uh, when it comes out later in the fall, uh, mid-October probably, or late October. So what you get with that is this, again, I said this tried and true sensor that's been out for a couple of years with giant pixels. It has 5.3 micron size photo sites, which compared to 35 millimeter film format cameras of the similar resolution, makes the pixels about 30% larger. Larger pixels means better dynamic range, better signal to noise ratio. So this camera uh, at that price point, uh, you know, it's also going to have the six and a half stops of in-body image stabilization for a really sharp still photography and also to help you with video. Uh, it gains the weather sealing, it gains all the same operation, the same film simulations, the same menu structure, and the same processor as the GFX 100S. Uh, again, the uh, price point on this would be $3,999. So we've given you a basically an entry level, really good camera for uh, portrait wedding photographers and landscape travel shooters with a nice compact lens to go with it. So there we go. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day.